Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Psalm 96. In the name of Jesus, amen. Today is the day you've been waiting for, maybe in more than one way. <laughs> today you have the answer to your prayers. Today you rejoice, you are glad, you have cause to be joyful. Because today, every promise made by the psalmists and the prophet, all that you've sung from your youth today is fulfilled in your hearing. Now Israel knew, the people of Jerusalem knew, the king comes, he comes to save us. And the day that he comes is a day for great celebration. Now the early Christians just called it the day, or as we call today, the Lord's day. Today is the day that God visits you, his people, forgives you your sins, heals you of all your disease, and the whole creation, even the trees, burst out in joy. And that's why we heard on that day, Palm Sunday, the crowds, even the little children, sang out, Hosanna. Hosanna, that means, Lord, save us. They broke out in joyous song on the Mount of Olives because they believed that Jesus was the one who had come to save his people. Blessed is he that comes. The long-awaited Messiah comes. That was true on that day, but it's true on this day, too. The King comes for you today. And that makes today a day of great celebration. Again, in more than one way. The Lord comes today to visit all of you and to redeem you all from your sins. He comes to you humble, bringing salvation. Despite being surrounded by November darkness, by a world captivated by fear and distress, the Lord's visitation today gives light to you in this darkness, a light of incomparable beauty, breaking into the gloom and scattering the darkness, the night. He comes. Let us go out to meet him. Blessed is he. Blessed is he because Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He was before time even began. And he has followed humanity through all nations and empires, through all times of health and times of great sickness. And he will do so. He will follow humanity until the end of all history on the great day. That's the day the psalmist was singing about. And today is a shadow of that great day. It's a day that looks forward to the last day. But not all look forward to that last day with joy. They look to Christ coming again and they don't see a day with joy and gladness and rejoicing but rather a day of judgment with fear and terror. That's true too. Christ, or as he says, like a thief in the night, he will come and sit upon his throne and judge between the living and the dead, judge all people. In that moment of judgment, no hosannas will be heard. Rather, I think we rightly imagine that moment to be with deep, tense silence a hushed expectation of the judgment that will come forth from his lips about us, about you. So if his arrival is going to be like this, a judge upon his throne, then how can we rejoice and say today, blessed is he who comes? How can today be so bright and joyful if the last day fills us with dread? What is it about Advent that calls people back to church even twice a week? gathering on Wednesday nights, too. It's simply this. He comes, 
but he does not always come in the same way. Throughout all history, he has come in such different ways. He appeared to our fathers of old as the angel of the Lord, as the burning bush, as the pillar of fire and cloud. Once he came to his people as the infant child. Another time he is known by the people as a wandering prophet. Today, in our gospel, we heard of him as a king, coming in, riding not upon a horse with armor, but rather humble, riding in on a donkey, the true Solomon, the prince of peace. So he comes in different ways. And he comes to you today, too, in like manner, not visibly, but easily recognizable. He comes into his church as the Lord of the gospel, speaking his words to you. This is what you've known since childhood, even Franklin, since baptism. He comes to claim his own, as he did for Franklin, through water and the word. That's Jesus coming, adventing. And it's really incredible that such humble, even weak means would be the way that Jesus saves us. That's really what this season is about as we prepare for our Lord's coming, as we celebrate his birth, is to restore in us our sacred imagination, our childlike faith, our wonder at the great ways that God comes to us. Once more, we are to be seized with joy and to cry out, blessed is he who comes. Whether it's the wide-eyed child who delights in all the new decorations, or it's the grumpy senior citizen, <laughs> all hearts sing out today, blessed is he who comes. It still begs the question, obviously it was pretty incredible what happened for Franklin, but what's so remarkable about his arrival for all of you today? It's not the last day. It's not the day that maybe fills you with dread and judgment. It's not that great day when creation is finished and it is said, there is no more time. No, today he comes, but he comes in the midst of his saving work, his saving you. He comes today to continue what was begun in you in your baptism and which will be brought to its completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear children, his arrival, his coming to you today, is for you. He comes today for your sake. He comes to help you. He comes to invite you into his presence. He comes to give to you the fruits of his salvation. He comes to say to you, I forgive you all your sins. That's so you don't think that God has given up hope for you. That you don't fear the last day. That you know that last day, while it will come suddenly, the verdict has already been declared. Your sins are forgiven. So you are the ones whom he is still keeping, still watching, still saving. Today you learn Jesus comes because he loves you. And he's not done with you. See, your king comes to you. Now he comes on the donkey, and that of course is to show us that he is the king of peace. He comes with authority to rule. And his rule is not that of a tyrant, but he comes and protects his subjects from violence and abuse. He comes as the truly benevolent king who cares for everyone and who helps their cause. Jesus is quite a remarkable king who would rather go to his own death than judge any of those who betrayed him and cried for his own crucifixion. Even while he died, he forgave those who sinned against him. Father, forgive them. That's a benevolent king, a king who died for the guilt of the cowardly disciples, his own subjects. In short, a king who died for you and for all. And again, he hasn't forgotten you. He knows just how bad it can be. He knows about all your broken promises. He knows how you've neglected to care for those whom he's given to you. 
He knows about every failed attempt to do well. He knows how you fall short, not even doing the minimum, much less your best. And yet he remains utterly committed to you. That's what that promise of baptism is all about. That he will continue to work to save you, to support and defend you against all accusations of your conscience and every word of condemnation that even God's law says you deserve. So now he comes to you. He comes to help you who need him. And he gives you the gift that you truly need, his blood-bought forgiveness. That means today is the day, the Lord's day. He comes to forgive you once again, making each day new. And that's why we have cause to sing out for joy today. That's what makes your hearts glad and your whole being rejoice. That's why you all sing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because blessed is he who still allows his day of grace to dawn upon us. Blessed is he who still causes his sun of grace to shine. Blessed is he who comes to visit and redeem his people. Blessed is he who comes with his word of forgiveness over and over. Blessed is he who comes in his body and blood to strengthen and keep you with him. Blessed is Jesus who comes now to save you. In his holy name, amen.